Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Strife's Talking Points, where I try and make sense out of this insane world we live in by going through the news and trying to have conversations with people on the internet about it. Yeah. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And in this video, uh, CNN politics, this is from CNN, Mueller to testify publicly on July 17th following a subpoena. Uh, from Congress and you can already see here in the video we have word out of the House Judiciary Committee of a major move to get more disclosure from the Mueller probe concerning Mr. Mueller himself. Manu, thank you for uh, brother for being Now, more out of the testimony, more than his 400 plus page document, um more about this um here we go. The subpoenas to Mueller came weeks after negotiations between Democrats and the special counsel's team and the Justice Department. Democrats are proceeding with subpoenas to Mueller after he spoke publicly last month and said he did not wish to testify publicly about the investigation and that his testimony would not go beyond what is written in special counsel's 448-page report. Uh, he, quote, he said he, he was deeply... He was and is deeply reluctant to come testify, but nonetheless, he has agreed to respect the subpoena, Schiff told CNN. Uh, Schiff said the committees would be questioning Mueller separately the same day and that the committee would question Mueller's staff in closed session following the public hearing so that they can discuss the counterintelligence portions of the investigation. Now, all of this is discussed at length in the Mueller report. You can find that report everywhere on the internet now. It is essentially 98% there. The only stuff you cannot see is the grand jury testimony and things related to ongoing investigations. Um, Democrats have been talking about bringing Mueller in to testify since the investigation wrapped in March, and their decision to issue subpoenas comes more than a month after the initial date that Nadler had floated for Mueller to appear. <clears throat> now, here we go. Quote, I hope the special counsel's testimony marks an end to the political gamesmanship that judiciary Democrats have pursued at great cost to taxpayers. Uh, right now, our government is non-functioning. Everything is a hearing on everything else. And it's very strange that this continues. Uh, that's from Doug Collins of Georgia, top Republican on the committee. May this testimony bring to House Democrats the closure that the rest of America has enjoyed for months, and may it enable them to return to the business of legislating. Now, keep in mind, there was um, the whole thing was about uh, collusion and obstruction of justice, where there was no. Um, collusion with the Trump campaign, and that's cited here. In the first volume, the special counsel did not establish a criminal conspiracy between the Trump campaign and the Russian government, but it did detail numerous contacts between Russians and members of the Trump's Democratic Trump's team that Democrats charge are troubling, even if they aren't criminal. In the second volume, Mueller documented nearly a dozen episodes of possible obstruction of justice obstruction of justice into a non-criminal crime or conspiracy which is where now you hear uh, the high crimes and misdemeanors uh, obstruction case coming out where there was no links no crime between them just contacts back and forth the special counsel wrote that the G doj guidelines did not allow a sitting president to be indicted and the investigation could not exonerate trump so that's the whole trick here is Mueller said he could not prove Trump innocent. However, he could not find any links or any uh, guilt by association, anything in there to show there was a conspiracy that the uh, Trump campaign was coordinating with him. And I always found this interesting. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is the infamous lawyer who was meeting with, the, who had one of the meetings at Trump Tower. Natalia, I'm not even going to bother trying to say her last name. She was a Russian lawyer who attended Trump Tower meetings. That's the focus in the investigation. Now, what's really interesting is the same woman who employed Glenn Simpson of Floyd Fusion GPS and dined with him before and after the meeting has more ties to Fusion GPS, the people who created the still dossier, the um, basically the foreign 
governments uh, where the Clinton campaign hired foreign nationals to create this document of op-ed research so they could use against Trump. And one of the people that they were employing and using to get the information is one of the people who then went to meet with Trump and was as Trump campaign and as kind of the Mueller uh, report says was basically brushed off by the Trump campaign and move on. Uh, and that is now the topic, the Russian in hacking of our election, which as you go more and more into it, you see they were just playing both sides. They spent uh, a little bit of money and made some um, contact with not generally anyone, with various people in government, none of which seemed to go anywhere. And then, of course, they were supporting all sides, just trying to ramp up issue and disc and problems in the strife let's just use my own my title there they were trying to create strife and discord in the u.s resulting from our election and they succeeded in so much that we are still two years almost two years later still cycling this idea now uh, if you try and Google any type of information responding to the election, the issues there, you'll be led to another story here, which I find even more interesting. Uh, there is an expose uh, interview, a hidden camera interview of the Project Veritas with members of Google, with higher ups at Google. And the Google exec here, this is from the Washington Times. Uh, no. Yeah, Washington Times. Google exec in Project Veritas Sting says only big tech can stop the next Trump situation. <clears throat> big tech is now going to enforce the Silicon Valley's uh, morality, their beliefs, their ideas on U.S. elections. Not facts, not you making your own decisions, not presenting you uh, in nonpartisan information letting you find the facts letting you go through it themselves they have decided they are the arbiters of truth now and you see calls from elizabeth warren and numerous republicans and people trying to bring this down however this information is being censored um here we go a direct quote elizabeth warren is saying we should break up google miss jenny said and like, I love her, but she's very misguided. That will not make it better. It will make it worse. Not because, because now all these smaller companies who don't have the same resources that we do will be charged with preventing the next Trump situation. The next person that the far left, that these ideologues don't like will be more difficult to defeat because they will be presented with various ideas, various um, talking points, various things to make their own decisions. She added, it's like a small company cannot do that. Now, in response to this undercover video, Google has removed the Veritas video. This is after YouTube and Google censored the Project Veritas uh, video of Pinterest, which is another one of these Silicon Valley companies that was caught banning and blocking and suppressing information because they don't like the whole idea of pro-life, um, which represents about 43% of the U.S. They were blocking that, labeling it. They have been noteworthy calling people who are Jewish, you know, Nazis and all these other terrible things. And you see this ramp up of big tech actually directly saying we're going to interfere in the elections we're going to change how people think we're going to create what we want mainstream media isn't really reporting on this a lot because they are trying to do the same thing and it, now google is decided to assist them i believe that if there's information out there you should be able to find it research it learn about it if you agree great if you disagree great However, I don't need someone at Google <clears throat> who is directly influencing what I see, what I can hear because of their political bias. Now, people scream, my 
private platform. These are their companies. They have the right. <clears throat> and what's funny is the left, this group of Democrats, this group that has always, always stood up for freedom of speech, freedom of expression, all these various ideas are now pushing back. They're saying censorship is good. Silence people you disagree with. Shut it all down. <clears throat> And here, if you go to BitChute, you can actually look for Veritas visuals and see the Veritas uh, video. <coughs> and here is a very short clip from so their video. Can... Sorry, I thought I had it a... time stamped. What are you doing internally? And so... The model says that even if the... So they're trying to modify the model of search so that even if so even the data of a female CEO basically stating that they want to control how your search results work. Um, I really thought I had this set. Jen and I head of responsible innovation at Google. Our definition of fairness is one of those things that we would be like obvious to everyone would agree. And it wasn't. So Google decides what's fair. They decide what's equitable. These f people in California, in this small little niche of Silicon Valley, decide what you get. They decide. And that is just the most insane thing to me before. If Google is going to be a First Amendment publisher, a publisher under the First Amendment or under Section, uh, what is it, 630 or whatever it is that they have their platform protection on, such as a cell phone company. Imagine if your cell phone company recorded your conversations and shut off your service because they disagreed with what you said. That is kind of how Google and Pinterest and YouTube and all these different companies are working now. To if, if they disagree with you, they shut it down. I don't know. I see the big tech becoming the great election meddlers of the 2020 election, and they've started now. They're censoring, they're shutting down, they're closing the conversations, and hopefully somewhere in all this, the U.S. political system can rebound, push back, and if it does come down to breaking up Google so that Google is a company, uh, Gmail is a separate company like they did with Microsoft back in the day, I don't see that as being a bad thing. These large companies now own the conversation in the world, not just in the U.S. And if you disagree with them, they can just remove you, remove you from the conversation, remove you from reality. And yet we still focus on Mueller, Russian interference, where all roads lead to nowhere except for the president was mad that the first two years, of, the first year and a half of his presidency was marred by an investigation which found no ties, no collusion, and now is marred by the idea that he obstructed a investigation when almost all of the investigation material that I've seen that was even remotely controversial came from the Trump team themselves. But that's just my thoughts. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Do you believe that... This Mueller investigation where a handful of people that were tied to both the Democratic Party and the and the uh, uh, Fusion GPS, the creators of the documents, are being the ones used to link Trump to Russia, even though they are directly linked to the Steele dossier, which is basically foreign intelligence purchased by the Democratic Party. And the Mueller report, which found nothing, but is now being used to strike because of collusion now being used to strike obstruction when as you go through it and you read through it there's really no point into the obstruction stuff just trump is mad that he was being investigated and he acted upset for being investigated as something that has been proven not to have happened or do you think that google youtube Pinterest, Facebook, all these huge tech platforms which are outright interfering and bringing the interference into the U.S. elections should be the ones targeted by future investigations and broken up or censured or de changed. Where do you fall on this? Thank you all for listening and hope you have a wonderful day.